So I'm going to talk about how we brought restaurant dashboard to the web using like a library called React Native Web, which probably sounds like a lot of trouble to go through just to get a React app. A little bit of the background. This is our original app for restaurants and it was a web app. And then as Arun mentioned, they tried to like do all these things to get it to sort of be on a tablet, but then finally they realized they just were going to make a React Native app. And we're still trying to get rid of RDV1, and it's really confusing to have all these similarly named things. And this is our current app. Why did we decide that we needed a web app? In Brazil and India right now, tablets are not attractive. They're very stealable. They take up a lot of space. They're a lot of the restaurant owners like don't want to have them. And I think from our perspective here, it's like, oh, wow, it's so nice to have a tablet, like tap, 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 you know, but, but they didn't want that. They didn't, they don't want that. And we actually learned that what, what they do, which is I think really different than, than, you know, how restaurants operate here is you could have like, like a small restaurant chain with like 10 locations and then maybe somewhere else in the city in some office, there would be someone who is getting the orders through the different like delivery options you know, including Uber Eats. And then they would either enter it into their point of sale system or actually call up the restaurant. So they're like bringing it backwards in terms of like the technology. And they really don't want a million tablets. They'd rather have like one person sitting at a computer with a lot of browser tabs, you know, clicking between them. And so we had to make that solution for them. So this is a glimpse of um, my test restaurant for restaurants. And just showing that it, it pretty much looks the same on web. And yeah, it's like basically the same as our React Native app. Yeah, so the way that we do this is using a library called React Native Web. It's made by Nicholas Gallagher. And he says, there's no reference to React DOM. The app component is defined using the platform agnostic APIs and components introduced by React Native. This allows the app to be rendered to web and native platforms. So yeah, so basically it's kind of like doing like React Native sort of abstracts out a lot of the implementation stuff and makes it possible for native. So it's sort of doing it again for web itself. So when we write, when, so this is sort of to show how kind of what it looks like in terms of how we're writing it. For example, when we, when we write React Native, we would write, you know, using a view component and React Native Web takes that in and like, transpiles it into things that have divs because um, a view component is what React Native uses, but a browser doesn't really know what a view component is. It only knows what a div is. So it, it takes a generic React Native components and turns them into like actual DOM rep rep representation. Yeah, and then it's just a big JavaScript file that we can run in the browser. Okay, this is where the nomenclature gets a little confusing. So we have one repo called RD, and this is where basically all of our actual logic is. That's where the app is, the, the mobile app or tablet mobile app is, where actual things happen, where React code is written or React Native code is written. Then we have, in order to make the web app work, we have this other repo called restaurant-dashboard. People who named that thought that was really funny. And it's just like layers of confusion. So no one ever knows what we're talking about. So that's a pretty simple web app. It has a small backend that basically just like sends down the app and proxies, you know, all the network requests and stuff to, the, to our like regular backend that our native mobile app would talk to more like directly. So I'm going to talk about how we release it and like how, how we actually get the updated version of the, the tablet onto browsers. So in the RD repo, we land, we call, I don't know, merged to master new, a new version and we increment the version number. And then we have a continuous integration job that publishes it to our internal NPM catalog. So it's really just an NPM module, that's the whole app. And then in the restaurant dashboard repo, all we have to do is deploy a new version that references this new version of the actual tablet app. So we just update the version number in package.json. And this is kind of to show how, when we, when we go to run the app, how React Native 
is, in terms of how you use it, it's very similar to using React, or, you know, React Native Web and React Native are very close. It's just like one little place in the code where we really have to fork them. So for tablet, we run the app in a file called index.js and you import the app registry from React Native and you register the component and there you go. And then when, when we know that we're running in a web setting, we, we get use a slightly different file, which is the, you know, in a folder called web slash index.js. And we, instead of having app registry from React Native, we're getting it from React Native Web. And we're running that, of that existing component there. And you can kind of see like the differences, like here we're, it says root tag document dot get element by ID root. So here we have this extra, extra little step of like attaching the app onto the you know browser's DOM. So so to walk through how we develop locally, because when when we're making changes that we're hoping are going to end up on the browser, whether or not those are it could be a change that's only for browser or it could be a change that's also for tablet, we pretty much most of that work happens in the RD repo, the React Native repo. To develop locally, we would start up an, a Webpack server and we serve that app as a node module. And Webpack is an open source module bundler for JS files for use in web. And so sort of the only thing we have to do to, to tell Webpack that, that it's gonna be a web app as opposed to a, the, the native one in the end. So we export the module and it has the entry is the resolved path of web dot web slash index dot JS, which is the file on the previous slide or maybe the slide before that. But yeah, so it's sort of very simple there in terms of deciding that it's going to be web. So it really worked for us for in most cases. Or, you know, sort of in general, it did work, but we did reach some edge cases. Mobile analytics library was something we had to deal with. Authentication. Now we have like a new web service between us and our like the larger Uber backend. So that was an extra step. Um, and then Vue no longer is responding to an on tap call, you know, event. It's now an on click event. So just kind of add that in everywhere. And other things we had to deal with was this is sort of exists outside of our typical like code push system that Arun was talking about. And that allows us to like sort of do staged rollouts. So it's a little safer. You know, we can experiment based on who's, you know, to decide who's getting which version of the app. I mean, I guess we could add more layers to it, but right now it's pretty simple in the sense that we, there's only one version that exists. There is some, I know this is something Arun talked about, like there is some like native mobile code in the React Native app. And in those cases, we did have to rewrite it. For example, like printing, stuff like that's closer to the operating system. You have to rewrite it. But overall, it was really not that much. I think at one point someone said it was like 94% the same code. So it's been, I feel like, you know, now that, now that it's ported over, it's pretty simple going forward. I want to talk about some of the things that we're doing now to like, we've sort of got to the point where it works. Now we want to make it actually like a pleasant website to use and actually make sense as a website and not just seem like a bizarre website that really looks like an app. So kind of like learning that like before we had our like help slash menu button in the bottom right, that doesn't really make sense for web because we, we tend to sort of start at the top and usually on the left and as if we're like reading like a piece of text. So moving it, we're moving it over to the top left and that's gonna be for both web and tablet. So we're doing our best to not have like a super forked experience because it's no fun to write that code or debug it. And also to even reason about, oh, well, what, what, what happened to the customer? Like, what, what, what are they seeing, you know? And then another thing that we're doing now is sort of bringing up this, the app to regular web standards. So adding, you know, browser tab titles that tell the people that are using, for, especially when you have like a whole bunch of tabs to try to like give the most important information and also richer desktop notifications. And yeah, so I added that we were putting all this web code in the native RD 
uh, repo and it's just gated like, oh, platform.os equals web and do this code. We're already writing the React Native app in JavaScript, so we just kind of keep it all in one place. So that's been really nice. And I think it'll even become, it will even, as like time goes on, it'll seem even nicer because we've sort of laid most of the groundwork. So yeah, that's how we um, put our React Native app on the web. Thank you.